Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours. This is your Monday Minutes, and we are going to wrap up today the poisoning and overdose section of the EMS Quick Study uh, resources here. Uh, this is episode 34, believe it or not. we got a lot way to go before we get to the end of our Quick Study Tips, but we're going to wrap up poisoning and overdose, and today we're going to be talking about bites and stings, but of course, I always like to ask and kind of address the question, why is this important? Well, like I always say, it's important for exam prep, right? Because what I try to do in these Monday Minutes is really focus on the key elements that you often will see on many, many EMS exams, especially a general exam, like a state exam or a national exam, okay? But guys, this stuff is also important. It's going to help you document better. It's going to help you do your patient assessments better. It's going to be be able to help you kind of keep a clinical picture in your mind of what you're looking for, okay? Everything ties in together. You can't go into studying looking to just pass your test. It's not about passing a test, right, if you can't help the patients afterwards, right? You can tell anybody that can study a book, they can go pass the test. It's understanding when and how and why and all that good stuff, how to apply it, when to apply it, and when it's good for your patient, and good for you to do it for your patient. So that's why this stuff is important. I know I say this every week, but I'm just trying to hammer home this one key point on these Monday Minutes. All right, so bites and stings. Well, normally talk about a lot of things with these type of um, poisonings, right? And some of the common ones mainly are bees and wasps that we see a lot out there in the field, right? The bee stings. The wasps, a lot of times you'll get called for anaphylactic reaction when it's not really anaphylactic reaction. Somebody just got stung by a bee and the area where they got stung is pretty much localized, right? Redness and a little bit of swelling to that area, right? We got to think about people who are, you know, more um, sensitive to it, who have been exposed to bee stings in the past or wasp stings in the past and they're going to have an anaphylactic reaction because they've, they're building up, you know, those uh, uh, chemicals in their body that will trigger that allergic reaction. Now, spiders are a big thing too. A lot of times it's localized for spiders. People don't have allergic reaction to spiders. Same thing with ants, right? Most of them ants, the bites aren't gonna really be that big of a deal. You have ants like fire ants that are very painful and, and, and whatnot. You might get cold for those types of patients, but not a lot we're gonna do for that out in the field, right? But transport and be supportive to that local area, right? Ice packs, things like that. Um, scorpion stings. I've never seen one. I kind of live in the north, so we don't really have a lot of scorpions running around Brooklyn and stuff, right? But if you're in that area, you need to be aware of, of scorpion stings. Then we got snakes and jellyfish. Jellyfish, you know, a lot of times we'll get that with our uh, summertime you know, injuries and, and, and uh, exposure to these types of animals, right? And snakes, of course, are a big one, I think, no matter where you are, because people will have exotic snakes, even poisonous snakes as pets all across the country, right? So I want to talk about snake bites real quick because this is kind of the, the, the main thing that we end up kind of focusing on out there in the field, right? The most concerned for us are the coral snakes and the pit vipers, right? The venom that these snakes have can cause neurotoxicity toxicity like paresthesias and paralysis, neuromuscular type disturbances, right? You might, have, might even get hemotoxicity with these patients as well, where they have a, it, the, it, the venom can be a coagulant and it could be, or it can be an anticoagulant, right? It can damage things like platelets as well, right? And what they're supposed to be doing for your body. And then cardiotoxicity. And this can be a decrease in cardiac output or decrease in blood pressure. Now, of course, it can depend upon the type of snake, the size of the snake, the type of bite, all that type of stuff ties into it. So you should be, kind of familiar with where you live and the types of snakes that are are you know in your area on how to treat and and um, transport these patients right um a lot of times you know these snake bites can just be a local type of a thing where you have some sort of enzymes that can cause um tissue destruction to a local area where the patient gets bit and the same thing goes for some spiders you know we get these spiders out there brown recluse and stuff like that that can cause tissue issues, right? I've seen patients actually that have had brown recluse, uh, uh, recluse uh, bites that have lost limbs because of it, right? So this is the type of thing we have to keep an eye out for and what we have to, you know, 
you know, keep in mind when we're treating these patients. Now, management, insects, like I said before, normally a person gets a bee sting, a wasp sting, you bit by a snake or a spider, it's, it's supportive unless there's an allergic reaction going on or something else. There's an issue going on with their ABCs, right? You want to treat the symptoms for that patient. Sometimes patients get very anxious when they get bit by these insects because they feel they've heard so much about it that they feel that something might happen to them, right? Snakes, again, supportive, right? And if you've got um, these poisonous snakes in your area, you should know whether or not which hospitals in your area have the antivenom or can get the antivenom for that snake, right? But again, the management is going to be your safety, of course, especially with snakes, right? Make sure that it's not still in the area. Um, your ABC, ABCs, oxygen, and even IV establishment, which might kind of speed up the treatment when you get to the hospital. Or if you talk about things like the, the cardiotoxicity where the patient has a low cardiac output and the low blood pressure, you might want to give some fluid, right? So of course, follow your local guidelines, your local protocols, what your medical director suggests for you to do for these types of things, right? And don't forget, you've also got that poisoning, poisoning control number to call to get advice and guidance as well. Okay. So guys, that is pretty much it for me today. Next time we're going to get into neurological emergencies and primarily we're going to start talking about things like the CNS. We're going to go over pretty briefly the um, CNS itself. I kind of quick overview on that, but I'm going to get into um, the types of CNS disorders and we're going to talk about something called Vindicate. Right, you might have heard this before. I'm gonna kind of tease it a little bit here for you, but that's what we're gonna be talking about next time. It's gonna kind of be a longer episode next time here on the Monday Minutes. Okay, so that's it for me, guys. Please contact me, hook me up on social media, follow me on Instagram, on Facebook, Twitter, or even on Snapchat. I am at EMS Safe on all of these channels, or you can just type in the URLs, the links that I have here. I have these set up to direct you directly to that social media platform and my page where you can go ahead and join me. I'd love to see you join me there and engage with you and interact with you on these social media platforms. I know a lot of you have already taken me up on that. I appreciate it. Really appreciate that type of um, you know, love and social media juice that I like to call it, right? I, I love that stuff, and I love you guys following me there as well, okay? Um, guys, if you like these Monday Minutes, tell a friend about it. Spread the word, okay? Um, and, of course, if you have some minutes of your own, be sure to, to, to uh, let me know about them. Send me an email. My email is contact at emsofficehours.com. You can send me an email, and maybe I'll, I can deviate from these quick tips and do a Monday Minute or a session um, that you want to talk about. I'll even have you join me on a podcast and do sort of a live video Monday Minutes. The sky is the limit, guys, right? It's all about engagement, getting the information out there to help you, the provider, be the best EMS professional that you can. All right, guys, that's it for me. Again, my email, contact at emsofficehours.com. Visit emsofficehours.com for, for other Monday Minutes and a lot of other cool stuff that's there. Um, and join me, join me there either in the comments, again, some of the social media stuff I mentioned about, or there's a link there as well. You can go ahead and sign up for my email updates also. All right, guys, that's it for me. As always, I am Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours and the Monday Minutes. Stay safe.